In this example, we will look at how to apply a mesh current method to a circuit containing a dependent source. The dependent source is highlighted here. We can see that within the symbol there is a plus minus sign. This indicates that this component is a voltage source and also the magnitude of this dependent source is in terms of a current I phi. So this means that this dependent source is actually a current control voltage source. The steps to apply mesh current method to a circuit containing a dependent source is shown here. So let's see how we can systematically apply these uh, steps to solve the circuit. The first step is in indicated here. In this circuit, we have one, two, three meshes. Recall that a mesh is a loop that does not contain any other loops within it. Here we have arbitrarily labeled the loops I1, I2 and I3. Also here we have assumed clockwise uh, direction for all the loops. However, the, a different direction does not change the or impact the mesh current method. So let's apply Kirchhoff voltage law to these three meshes. We start with mesh 1 and in this mesh we have three circuit elements. We can start at any circuit element. So let's start at the 50 volt source. We can see that the mesh current I1 is entering the terminal marked minus and leaving the terminal marked plus. Going from minus to plus is a voltage rise and using passive sign convention voltage rise is written with a negative sign. So the first term that we get is minus 50. Next we have the 5 ohm resistor. We can see that there are two currents I1 and I2 flowing through this resistor. Since we are applying Kirchhoff voltage law to mesh 1, we give priority to the direction of I1. So this voltage drop is written with a positive sign and we get as 5 I1 minus I2. Next we have the 20 ohm resistor and similarly as before this voltage drop is 20 I1 minus I3. This is equal to 0. Let's move on to mesh 2 and let's start at the 1 ohm resistor. So here the first term is plus 1 I2. We're just applying ohms law to this resistor. Next is the 4 ohm resistor and we get plus 4 I2 minus I3. We get I2 minus I3 and not vice versa because we're giving priority to the direction of I2 because this is the mesh to which we are applying KVL at the moment. To finish off, we have the 5 ohm resistor and this is 5 I2 minus I3 is equal to 0. Next is the third and last mesh and here let's start at the dependent source we can see that the mesh current I3 is entering the terminal marked plus and leaving the terminal marked minus. Going from plus to minus is a voltage drop and we use positive sign for the voltage drop. Hence the first term is plus 15 I phi. Moving on to the 20 ohm resistor, there are two currents I1 and I3 flowing through this resistor and we give priority to the direction of I3. So this voltage drop is I3 minus I1 and then 4 I3 minus I2 is equal to 0. So this completes the process of applying Kirchhoff voltage law to the three meshes. The next step is to write the dependent source constraint equation. This means that we have to express the controlling variable, which in this case is I phi, in terms of the mesh currents. I phi is shown as the current flowing through the 20 ohm resistor in this case. 
In order to relate I phi to the mesh currents, a simple way is to apply Kirchhoff current law to either this or this node. Suppose we select the bottom node to apply Kirchhoff current law. First, we mark all the currents entering and leaving this node. So I phi is entering this node. I3 is entering this node. I1 is leaving this node. Kirchhoff current law states that the sum of currents entering a node is equal to sum of currents leaving. So following this, we have sum of currents entering I phi and I3. This is equal to I1. So this gives us the dependent source constraint equation. We can see that now we have four equations and four unknowns, I1, I2, I3, and I5. This four by four system of linear equations can be solved to obtain the values. We can use a calculator to solve this system of linear equations. And using the solve command on the calculator, the solution can be obtained as shown here. Thus, we obtain the solution as I1 is 148 by 5, which is 29.6 amps. I2 is 26 amps. I3 is 28 amps. And I5 is 1.6 amps. Once we solve the equations, we can solve for the circuit variables. In this case, we have to find the power associated with the dependent source. We can see that the current I3 is flowing through the dependent source. Hence, the power associated with the dependent source is the voltage, which is 15 I phi multiplied by the current, which is I3. We can see that I3 is entering the terminal marked plus and leaving the terminal marked minus. Since I3 is entering the terminal marked plus, using passive sign convention, we use a plus sign with the power calculation. Now we can substitute the values, and this gives the power as plus 672 watts. So the positive sign means that this dependent source is actually dissipating power in this circuit. We can use LTSpice to verify the solution. In LTSpice, the current control voltage source is available as part name H. And as discussed in earlier videos in this series, we need a test voltage source having zero volt magnitude in order to properly configure the controlling current in this source. So if we run the simulation, we obtain the DC operating point. And if I hover the cursor over the dependent source, we can see in the bottom left corner that the power dissipated is plus 672 watts. And this confirms the solution.